Enamel hypoplasia is actually a fairly common problem in dogs. It results in sensitivity and pain for the patient. Here is a picture of localized enamel hypoplasia in a dog. It is only seen on the canine tooth. In this case, it was regionalized to the mandibular canines and incisors due to trauma. And finally, this is an example of a patient whose entire mouth is involved. This is typically a genetic problem. This is a drawing of your pet's tooth. This is the crown, this is what you can see, and this is the root. Within this root is a root canal supplied with blood vessels and nerves that come in from the mandibular or maxillary artery, comes up to the crown of the tooth in an area called the pulp chamber. Overlying this tooth is a very thin layer of something called enamel. Enamel is less than a millimeter thick in dogs and cats, and it is a rock. Once it's gone, it can never be reformed again. Between the root canal and the enamel, this area is called dentin. Dentin is a somewhat living structure in that it has all these millions of little teeny tiny dentinal tubules running at right angles from the root canal out to the enamel. There are 50,000 of these dentinal tubules per square millimeter which is approximately twice as many as we have in our teeth. This means that our pets are twice as sensitive as we are. This is under the gum line here. Before the tooth erupts, there is no enamel. The enamel is formed by something called amelioblasts that create this enamel forming organ. The enamel is laid down on the teeth by this enamel forming organ. And then it forms like that. If any problems occur during this enamel development, whether it be traumatic, nutritional, or infectious, the enamel will not form correctly. And then, when the tooth erupts into the mouth, the enamel will flake off, exposing the underlying dentin. There are several problems that occur when you have this dentin exposed. First of all, each one of these little dentinal tubules contains a nerve ending. And each one of those nerve endings will fire every time the dog eats and drinks. Remember, their teeth are twice as sensitive as ours. In addition, you can have these millions of bacteria, which are small, get in through these dentinal tubules and then kill this tooth. Here is a radiograph of a tooth with enamel hypoplasia, which is also infected. You can see this by the black arrows showing a large root canal and the white arrows outlining the bone destruction secondary to the infection. In addition, the roughness of this tooth will increase the production of plaque and calculus, thus increasing the possibility of gingivitis and periodontal disease. Here is a picture of a nine-month-old dog with widespread enamel hypoplasia. Note the significant tartar already on the teeth, as well as the widespread gingivitis. And finally, it's unattractive. Treatment for enamel hypoplasia should be directed at removing sensitivity, blocking off the pathway of infection, smoothing out the tooth to get rid of the plaque and calculus, and improving aesthetics. All of these four things can be accomplished by placing a composite restoration over the tooth. Here is the post-operative picture of the previous case. Note how smooth and clean the teeth are. This pet is significantly more comfortable now. Here is another example of localized enamel hypoplasia. Notice the large defect on the canine and smaller one on the incisor. These are the same teeth after the restorations are placed. Not only is the tooth much better looking, the pet is free of pain.